My Line. Brought to you by Texaco. In all 50 states, you can trust your car to the man who wears the star, the biggest friend your car has ever had. And now, let's all play What's My Line? New York. Let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now, one of our most charming English cousins who has come to us via California, where he has been writing and performing and you'll see why he's in such demand in just a moment, Mr. Digby Worth. Now, here's a jolly, fun-loving lass. To tell the truth, it's Peggy Cass. <laughs> of National Library Week, and so who better to introduce than Mr. Books himself, Bennett Cerf. Speaking of National Library Week, the libraries do do a wonderful job, and John Daly is a, quite a reader himself. He reads at least 11 books a week, comic books. And uh, it's my chance to get even with him tonight because Tuesday he's going out to San Diego to talk to the Kiwanis Club. As he always says when I go away, people out in San Diego, lock your doors. Here's John Charles. Miss Peggy Cass, nice to have you with us. Nice to be Dick here. Me. Hello, John. Glad to have you back. Thank you. How long have you been in the country? Uh, you mean in the United States? Yes, this trip. About uh, 15, 16 months. 15, 16 months. Uh, Get used to it? Oh, yeah. Good, good. I'm glad, because uh, there are a few things for you to get used to in the next half hour, too. Wait till you get through with the, the half hour. Got some wonderful occupations for you tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program, but uh, right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? And Darby Gloy. Darcy. Darcy Gloy. Darcy. <laughs> Already is it... Uh, Miss or Mrs. Gloy? It's Mrs. Gloy. And where are you from, ma'am? Jackson, Wyoming. Is that Jackson Hole country? Yes, you know? it is. Oh, that's glorious America. I yeah, think that's so. That's wonderful. Nice to have you with us, Mrs. Well, Gloy. Nice to be aboard. May I present the panel, Mrs. Gloy? How do you do? How do you do? Now, would you join me over here, and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Gloy is salaried and deals in a service. And I think we ought to put your capacities to the test, so we'll start with you, Digby Wolf. Mrs. Gloy, you have a very English name, Darcy. Very English name. A service. Uh, do you go to the people that you provide the service for? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we should have a conference. <laughs> I knew that was coming up. <laughs> we want to be fair, Digby. We will, uh, we will admit that actually the service is, is substantially given by going out to give it, so that uh, we give you a qualified yes in that, and you go ahead. And do you provide this service for men and women? Yes. Uh, that sounds like a qualified yes as well. You provide the service slightly more for men than for women. No. No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Cat. Thank you. Uh, this service you give equally without stint to either men or women. To both. Oh. 
Well, we'd say that both benefit from the service as it is supplied. We don't know the exact numbers that I are involved, see. but they both do get benefit from it. Well, uh, do you uh, do something to the people? No. No, that's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Gloy, in the service that you perform, is there any involvement whatever of animals? Yes. Would it be a four-legged animal that uh, engages your attention? Yes. Would it be a domestic animal? Yes. Might it be an animal that people sometimes ride on? No. No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Is it an animal that one might find around a farm? Yes. Uh, does the, the animal have some properties that are useful to human beings? Yes. Is it uh, an animal that gives <laughs> milk? Now! <laughs> More down at six to go, Digby. It's not an animal that gives milk. Is it the same species, but the one that doesn't give milk? <laughs> no! <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Cash. After you do this something to the animal, can you eat it? No! Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Now, it's a four-legged animal that's domestic. Yeah. Neither horse, nor cow, nor bull. Would it be either sheep or pigs? No. no. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Is it an animal that you might ever have in the house? Yes. Uh, is it ever a pet? Yes. Is it an animal that one might have if one lived in the city in the house? Yes. Uh... Does it come in different shapes and sizes? Yes, it does. Uh, different pedigrees? Yes. Dogs? Yes. You do something two or four dogs? Yes. Do you touch the animals? Sometimes. Uh, may I rule out that you have anything to do with the animal that is uh, in the way of a veterinarian? Yes. Do you breed dogs? No. No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Wolf. Well, you do something for dogs, so you, it isn't, I shouldn't think that you cut down trees. <laughs> And I don't think you're a shepherd. Uh, <laughs> no. Do you train dogs? No. No. Nine down and one to go. Really? Miss Cass. Thank you. Uh, you say you sometimes touch the dog, but you touch each dog that you uh, treat in whatever you do for the dog? Uh, not always. No, not each one. If you no. ask it on the basis of each, we have to throw it over, and it's ten to... What did you have in mind, Betty? Does she make them look prettier? No. You no. have to touch them. No. What's the first thing that comes to mind? with a non-profit organization, if I threw that Oh, seeing eye dogs? No. 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 The dog walker. Why is she dog? She's no. a dog catcher. Dog catcher! <laughs> Actually, her official title is, uh, Miss, Mrs. Floyd's official title is Dog Control Officer. <laughs> but she is the dog catcher for Jackson appointed to that office by the, the uh, city council, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she apprehends same, unlicensed ones, impound strays, issues licenses, uses a panel truck. That's a very fine practice, if that's what's, what you what's call What's the biggest catcher. number of dogs you ever caught in one day? Well, I'd say about, uh, oh, just about every dog in Jackson one day. <laughs> about 10, I'd say. Mm. 10 in one yeah. day? Yes, that was the day they were all late with their licenses. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Practically. <laughs> See, it's a great deal. You go out and get it done and say, why haven't you got a license? Because she's got it all wrapped up in one fine package. That's the way to do it, Mrs. Gloy. Thanks very much. Right nice to have you with us. Another contestant in just a moment after this word. Now to meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Don. 
Friedman. Right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Friedman, where do you come from? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Nice to have you with us. Mr. Thank Friedman, you. may I uh, present the panel? Now, if you join me over here, we'll let the audience at home and the audience here with us in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Friedman is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin things with Peggy Cass. Thank you. Uh, number one, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Friedman, could, um, would I use your product? Yes. Thank you. Uh, would I use it uh, inside my house? Yes. Now, let me just say you could. We are not saying that you do necessarily. What but we're I saying could. is you could. We have no idea whether you do Thank or not. You. Is this fine product? Would my grandmother have used this product? Possibly. Uh, she could have. Mm -hmm. uh, is it made of. Oh, well, let's. Well, could you use it in the kitchen? Yes. Mm. Is, it... <laughs> is it. Is it made of metal? Partly. If my grandmother had it, it wouldn't be plastic, because they didn't have plastic then. So it's made of metal and of some other thing. Yes. Would the other material be cloth? No. No. Mm. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Friedman, is, is this object used for either cleansing or beautifying? No. 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 Two no, down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Uh, you said this product would be found in the kitchen. Is that the normal place for it to be found, Mr. Friedman? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Wolf. We said it could be found in the kitchen. Yes, Mr. Wolf. Uh, it would be found all over the house then, right? It what? could it be could found. It could be found all over mm -hmm. the house. Would this be used by men and women? Yes. I see. Does it come in contact with your body when you use it? Do you... Oh. Can I rephrase that? Do you touch it? Sometimes. I see. Uh, is it pleasant to use? Uh, does one enjoy using it? Yes. I see. It, then it's associated with leisure and pleasure as opposed to work. Yes. Mm. It, yes, I would say here, I'd, I'd just think of a circumstance in which, let's say, if it was the norm to use it as a matter of work, we would agree that it, uh, it was uh, work, but it is used for pleasure, too, a great deal. Very nicely put, John. Uh, does it have moving parts? Yes, it does. Uh, the moving parts, are they activated by a machine, or are they activated by moving the thing itself? I'm sorry, I mustn't say or. Are they activated by a machine? No, actually, Digby, I would think here, the, Mr. Uh, Friedman is absolutely right. There are moving parts involved. I wouldn't put too much weight to this particular aspect of this product, if I were you. I see. Is this product associated particularly with Cleveland, Ohio? No. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Cat. Thank you. Um, would I feel better if I used your product? <laughs> you could. You could. Would I look better? Uh, I don't think it could change your appearance in any Thanks way, no. Thanks a lot. Five down and five to go, <laughs> Mr. Sir. Mr. Friedman, uh, could your product be used either for entertainment or for comfort? Yes. Would it be comfort? No. No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Does any sound emanate from this product at any time? Yes. Uh, could it be considered in the family of musical instruments? Yes. Well, since you... Uh, since John said there is not a definite moving part, I may rule out the piano because that certainly has moving keys, and John would never lead us down the garden path. Would you, John? I wouldn't think of it. <laughs> I, may, I may leave right now. Is it, <laughs> is it therefore, uh, isn't, is it an instrument that is played with the hands or arms more than it is with the mouth? Yes. Is it in the Violin or cello family? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Digby. Uh, I'm thinking of one or two instruments, and I'm trying to work out a way I can get both answers without one no. Uh, it's played with the hands, principally. Yes. 
Is there a bellows attached to this musical instrument? No. Uh, that's eight down and two to go, Miss Kent. Um, does it have a lot of little holes? A lot of little holes? We hope not. It wouldn't be worth a hoot if it did. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Sir. M Mr. Friedman, if, if a little child played this instrument, would the neighbors possibly object to the noise? They could. They Any could. instrument, mm -hmm. the neighbors object Is to it, the noise. Might it be in the drum family? It might, yes. Uh, you, you have something to do with drums? Yes. You're yeah. a drummer. <laughs> now, uh, do you have anything to do with the manufacture of drums? Oh, I yeah. know what it is. I'm sure I know what it is. Yeah. Well, what is it? Well, if it's going to be that annoying to the neighbors, there's got to be cymbals. No, no, it's well, drums. Oh, oh, where have you been, Digby? You've been here 15 or 16 months, have you? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> no, actually, Bennett, you're in the thing. I'm going to throw the card over because... He does have something to do with the manufacturing of drums. It's a very special something. Actually, Mr. Friedman tests them. Tests drums. <laughs> and I, I threw the card over because actually Mr. Friedman was a professional drummer. And I dare say you still do it today when you get a, yes, I do. a chance to go out and do it. So he is a drummer, but his basic job is he tests drums now for the Rogers... Roger's Drum Company. Roger's Drum Company. Roger's Drum Company. That's like Ringo. He doesn't play them, he tests them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's in Cleveland, Roger. Yes, so. sir, in Cleveland, Ohio. Do you test the little ones and the big ones? Yes, I test, uh, I do test, I mainly test the Dynasonic snare drum, which is... You uh, do who? I test a snare drum we call a Dynasonic. The Dynasonic. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. It has a floating snare frame and it's uh, uh, built specially for discriminating drummers. It's uh, of the higher quality drum. It's the best in the world, by the way. Yeah, well, Bennett is the only we human being I know. Mr. Friedman, but I don't think we'd understand you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett's the only human being I know. It has a floating snare frame, too. Can I, can I just ask a question? I believe yeah. it is right that the skins of drums are now being manufactured out of plastic, as well they as hides. Yeah. Yes, I, yes yeah. they are synthetic plastic yeah. now. However, uh, cowhide is still used largely. So Which is the best? Been right or then. the better? Uh, cowhide, I think, gives you a... Uh, a more uh, original tone. Better tone. Yes, although uh, synthetic plastic lasts a little longer. It's more durable. <laughs> so stick with your cowhides, Digby, and thanks very much, Mr. Friedman. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, which requires that all the members of the panel blindfold themselves. That is the custom. And uh, when the blindfolds are all in place, we can go on. Everything in place, panel? Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, will you enter mystery guest and sign in, please? panel, in this case, we go to a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin things with Arlene Francis. Thank you, John. Would one find your name in the theatrical section of the newspapers? If you looked for it. Yeah, you, you could, Mr. Wolf. Are you uh, a personality as opposed to an actor? Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think to clarify there, we'd have to admit that our distinguished guest is, is certainly an actor and has so proven his merit, but he has great reputation uh, as much, if not more, because of a personality reference. Miss Cass? Thank you, there John. You <laughs> well Do put. you appear on a television series? Do I appear on what? A television, a television series. series. No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Surf. Well, have you ever appeared on a, a regular series of either television or radio? Yes. Miss Francis? Yeah, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you be considered a leading man rather than a character actor? <laughs> well, he's certainly a character, but I don't know about... <laughs> Here we go. I tell you, I'd sure like to be a leading man. <laughs> I'd like to be a leading man. Mr. Wolf? 
I, I, I'm absolutely sure I know that voice. Hey, speak up. Can I take a, a, a stab at it, uh, John? Why, why surely. Uh, I think you play the ukulele. Are you Arthur Godfrey? Ah. Ah. The wonder of this thing, I thought Arthur was doing a great job disguising a voice I that's never, almost undisguisable. Well, I, I never dreamed it, it would really be Charlie him. Charlie Weaver. It yeah. sounded like Charlie Weaver. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, I got all but you. Huh? And the wonder <laughs> thing, if you listen, because I listened to Arthur's radio show in the morning, and we grew up together. We didn't grow up together. He, in fact, he led me around by the hand when I started in, the, in radio many, many years ago, taught me a lot of the basic things you need to know. But if you've listened to it, you know that Arthur's made a movie. See, we thought you'd get into the movie thing and get just get thrown because Arthur had a ball making a uh, glass bottom boat. Yes, and darn it, I wasn't the leading man. He I, wasn't the leading man. I had to play her father, and that was rough. <laughs> the glass bottom boat's father? No, yeah, Doris, Doris Day. Day. Oh. <laughs> and you know what they had to do? They had to put contact lenses in my eyes to hide the gleam. <laughs> Now, there's I the best... have freckles, too, didn't I? There's the best <laughs> excuse I ever heard for using contact lenses. I must say, that's a great idea. When I first went, uh, you were actually the first American star I ever saw in Hollywood at the Brown Derby one time. I was sitting with, our, with uh, Jack Hellman from Variety, and he pointed me out. I was here. probably talking like that. <laughs> well, that was back in the days when Arthur used to uh, moonlight at the Brown Derby, carrying a tray. Is that what you're talking about <laughs> back in those days? <laughs> John, I'd like, like to tell you that uh, the Glass Bottom Boat is one of the funniest pictures I've ever seen. Have you seen it? Thank uh, you. I haven't seen it. And uh, you're great. You're just great. Oh, no, thank you. That's what it, you haven't seen it? No. For heaven's sake. No. You made it and you haven't seen it yet. Where did you see it? Out in the car? I saw the preview up, at, up on 86th Street. Oh, did you? It's an MGM picture. I have a vague interest. Oh, for God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce a member of the Board of Directors of Metro Goldwyn Mayor? Mr. Books, Cooks, Books, Mr. Sir. Well, that's great. You haven't seen the picture yet. No. Did you see the rushes? That no. You no. Doris said, if you would like not to be ill, don't look at the rushes. <laughs> so I never, I never went to look. She said she never does because you see yourself in angles you've never dreamed of and it always makes you ill. So I stayed away. <laughs> I suppose you don't remember this. You know, about 25 years ago, you told me, now, don't listen to records of what you've done. All you'll do is find reason enough to like yeah. it. Just do the best you can and, and uh, learn as you go. Yeah, it makes you, makes you wonder why you ever got in the profession when you hear yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this is an old Navy man. We're both old Navy men, and, and I wanted to tell you something. I went up to uh, the officers' candidate school at Newport on Friday to see Charles, my second son. Remember Charles? Oh, for Commissioned Ensign, shame. United States Naval Reserve. Isn't that great? Charlie, we're getting old. We're getting old, is right. <laughs> Thank you, old Skipper. Thank it's good you to so see much. you. Nice of so you to come. Thank you. Congratulations, panel. You were pretty good tonight, even though we gave you a rough time somewhere or the other. We'll be back after this word. And Arlene, I'll be looking at you on Password all this next week. Be good. And good night, Arlene Francis. Thank you, John. Good night. Good night, Digby. Come back and see us soon. You're a lovely lady, Arlene. Good Thank night. Thank you. Peggy, give my best to Orson Bean. I shall indeed. Good night. Good night, Bennett. I'll miss you. John, I hope you'll behave yourself in San Diego and La Jolla. Wonderful spot. And I'll send the funny books over to you before I leave. He reads them after I get through with them. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Woodson and Bill Tuck. This is Johnny Olsen speaking.